he was ensnared in a cable used by a plane towing a glider. He was dropping like a stone. So what did he do? The first I did was switch off the engine. And immediately afterwards, pull the punch out. He wafted into an orchard and walked away without a scratch. We're here at Aero, the grand show for light aircraft in Europe. And today we're going to look at uh, an aircraft that's powered by electrical power. Uh, and I'm speaking today with John Hurst. I'm Dan Johnson. And we want to give our thanks to the BRS Parachute Company for helping sponsor these videos here at Aero. When I first flew this aircraft, it was many, many years ago, and it had a gasoline engine on the front, and it was so long ago it had a Kawasaki on it, because that was when the Flight Star was an ultralight aircraft in the United States, and it's gone through a lot of iterations, and it became a two-seater, left the country, came back to the country, now it's left the country again, and it's got a different, well, I can't say engine, it's got a different power plant on the front of it. John, what powers this particular it used to be the flight star, now it's the E-Spider, yes. which is a giveaway. And everybody can tell that's an electric motor up there. Tell sure. us a little bit about the electric power on this airplane. Well, it's, it, and it is an engine, technically. It converts one form of energy to another, you know, so I guess we can still call it an engine, but it's more uh, more commonly referred, referred to as a motor. A motor, yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, so it's powered by a 32 horsepower electric motor, actually a little more powerful than the Kawasaki was. Yeah, actually. Uh, gives a nice, respectable climb rate, about three, 400 foot a minute. Uh, no problem. Now, you got to fly. Uh, yes, sir. I don't know this particular aircraft, but one very much like it. Uh-huh. Uh, and where did you do that, Tim? Out in California, near Los Angeles, at the Cable Airport. Okay, and this is how long ago? Well, this fairly is, recent. Yeah, this is back in uh, January. Yeah, this year, though. Yeah, January, so, February. Fairly recent experience with it. And uh, so, a three or four hundred foot a minute climb rate. After people are used to light sport aircraft with a thousand feet a minute, that doesn't sound like it. But what does it feel like to fly the aircraft with that kind of climb capability? Well, actually, you know, given that it's a lighter airplane uh, and you're you're kind of out there, it, it really feels nice. It's it's not it doesn't feel underpowered or anything at all. You get off the runway fairly quickly, and you're you're on your way and up. Uh, so I I enjoy the feel. It's it's also nice and quiet. How quiet is it compared to a? I don't know if you flew the original version of this, but you've flown lots of ultralight yes. type aircraft, uh, which with a two-stroke engine on it can be pretty right, noisy right. appears. How is this one? Compared? Oh my gosh, there is no comparison. It's it's did incredible. Did you fly with with headsets? Uh, I did. I did fly with headsets. Yeah, just to just to use the radio so really. So you can communicate. Though. So I can communicate without the. Not the muffle the sounds like. No, much. without the without the radio, you would need no headsets for sure. You wouldn't have any worry about your hearing. Or anything. Now you still get the prop noise. You get still spinning a prop. You do get some prop noise. However, um, the airplane's so quiet that it's about it's about the same same noise levels of conversation from a few meters away. You, you're not you don't you don't hear much, and you're definitely not going to buzz your friends because they're never going to look. They're not going to hear anything. Yeah, yeah, you go by, they won't have a clue. So John, looking over your shoulder here at the motor on this, I can see there's no. There's no reduction drive, it's a direct drive. Correct, yes sir, direct drive. How much uh, what says prop does this swing? It swings a 64 inch prop. 64. Yep. The empty weight is 266 pounds. And yet you've got to add batteries and to that, which is a considerable extra weight that will change over yeah. time. So the aircraft's going to come into the American market as what? It's going to come in as a light sport aircraft. Light sport, so they'll yes, go through sir. the whole uh, through light the, sport process. Exactly, then. yeah, a little, little heavy to be a part one of three all. Yeah, it just won't make it yet because right. FAA won't grant the weight of batteries as the equivalent of a five gallon gas tank, which is what's in the part 103. Correct. That it could almost make if it weren't for that. They yeah. would make an exception about that, it might work, but so far that's not the decision. Right. And uh, this is now offered from Unique Aircraft. Yes. Uh, it used to be known as a flight star uh, when it was a, that aircraft in this country in the United States with a gasoline engine. But, yes. Uh, it's been modified a little bit since the flight star days. Yeah, the aircraft it's has. sort of racy looking uh, yeah. uh, uh, nose fountain, nose caroling, toweling on it. Yeah. Uh, where do the batteries go in the aircraft? The batteries are physically under the seat. Under the so seat. So they're not above your head, they're not behind you, they're in a very safe location now. Yeah, that'd be a real great place to have them. Yeah. The weight of batteries being what they were, you don't want these things hitting you from behind and they right. some sort of a disaster. So. Right. So that's good. And those batteries can come out and you can put another set in and fly for a longer time. Uh, actually, on the E Spider, the batteries are fairly fixed. Are they? So okay. yeah. So what we need to do is put it on the ground and charge it for a minimum 90 minutes, 
and then go for another one. Well, that's pretty quick. Though. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, 90 minutes after after 45 minutes of this, I have a nice little rest. I, I can do. Yeah. So that. okay, let's talk about how long you can fly this. Right? Fly sure. for 45 minutes or so. Yeah, 45 minutes to an hour. More realistically, about 45 minutes. Do you have any reserve time built into that? That includes a 30 minute reserve. Okay. So, you know, you could. So you could fly for a whole 45 minutes and still have some juice left oh, over definitely. to get back to the airport. Yes. Yeah. Without question. And then you go take a break and talk to your buddies for a little while and do war fly, war stories and whatnot. Meanwhile, you plug in the airplane. Plug in. it in, go fly again. Yeah. And uh, we're talking pretty cheap uh, recharging here. I've heard numbers like you know, two, three, four, five dollars. Oh yeah. To yeah. recharge it completely and go fly again. Oh yeah. You're. I mean, the, the fuel cost is negligible, <laughs> which, which to me is incredible. Not to go fly and not even think about how much that flight is going to cost. What do you think uh, the aircraft might be available in the U.S., John? Do you have any idea? In the U.S., we're looking at a little over a year. So 2014 sometime we may see this aircraft on the market for sale. Yes. Have the uh, prices changed, and we don't want to think a video will be out of date right away, but have you heard any numbers about what the price might be? Around the $40,000 range is what we're aiming at. And that'd be ready to fly then if it's LSA. All ready to go. So yep. that's a pretty inexpensive purchase for like for an all electric, all electric. This is not hybrid or anything else, just electric power. Pure electric. Uh, $40,000, that's not too bad a price really today at all. And I'm looking up here and I'm seeing it's, it's just, there doesn't appear to be anything up there except a motor hanging on the end. Yeah. That's all it is. Well, What's in the uh, cowling right behind it? That's the controller for the motor. Basically what that does is it takes the power from the battery and sends it to the motor. So the throttle, what we, what we would think of as a throttle is in there oh, okay. to control how fast the motor goes. And also it's looking at how, it's looking at some other things like how hot is the motor. Um, down to the display in the cabin. Okay. And speaking of displays in the cabin, most of us pilots are used to looking at either our watch to know a gas tank's uh, capacity or a gauge that might tell us how much fuel we got on board. Right. Well, you can't do that since there's no gasoline in this guy. Yeah. Uh, how do you know how much kilowatt juice hours. you got left? Yeah. And it's what, are the, what are the numbers show? What do you see? Well, you have basically a gauge in there that says, you know, here's it's how many kilowatt hours are left number? in the battery. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, pretty, pretty straightforward. Yes. And so you're seeing a full charge when it starts, and then you'll, you'll watch a needle go down, come down, or you see a number go down. You'll see a number and a needle. Okay, so both ways. Yep. Yep. Well, like a, a fuel lot, gauge. A lot more to learn with an electric airplane like the E-Spider sitting behind us here, John. Where should we go on the web to get even more information about this aircraft? www.uneek.com. Okay. And there, there we can find out more about the E-Spider. Yes, sir. And pictures of John flying it, no doubt. <laughs> Possibly. Maybe that. But we'll see about that. Uh, I'll have more about it and have already written about the E-Spider on ByDanJohnson.com or BYDanJohnson.com. Thanks for joining us here at Arrow. Thank you. More and more pilots of little planes are asking themselves, what color is their parachute? It was a beautiful day for flying. Ernst Kuhn of Neuss, Germany, was piloting his small two-seater a thousand feet above some idyllic French countryside near the town of Gap. In an instant, it became a pilot's worst nightmare. Out of the corner of his eye, he saw an airplane climbing right toward him. So what I did, uh, pull a little bit. Then when you see the video, something happened. I believe it was a rope in my propeller. It sure was. He was ensnared in a cable used by a plane towing a glider. He was dropping like a stone. So what did he do? The first I did was switch off the engine. And immediately afterwards, pull the puncture. A parachute not just for him, but for his whole plane. He wafted into an orchard and walked away without a scratch. I can't understand how it was so, but it was so. It was a moment with, I think, very, very much adrenaline. Ernst was saved by a rocket-propelled parachute system for airplanes made by Ballistic Recovery Systems of St. Paul, Minnesota. The company claims the chutes have saved 199 lives. Cirrus Designs is the first company to build general aviation airplanes with BRS parachutes as standard equipment. And Ernst rebuilt his little bird himself. And of course, installed a new chute before he took flight again. Do you think that you are alive today because of that parachute? Yes, 100 percent. 100 percent. Parachutes cost between $3,000 and $20,000, depending on which plane you're putting it into. Of course, when you ask Ernst, worth every penny. You know, it's like the, the credit card commercial. Priceless, right? 